House of the Dragon season finale aired a few weeks ago to critical acclaim, leaving fans of the fantasy drama series to wonder about the state of play in Westeros. Many people will undoubtedly rewatch the series in the following months. Have you ever considered missing an actor switch near the end? Who is the altered character? What effect did he have on the series? Let us investigate. First, did you catch that actor swap in the House of the Dragon finale? As the season ended, we met the twin brothers of the Kingsguard, Sir Eric Cargill and Sir Eric Cargill. Gill, played by Luke and Elliot Tittensor. According to Entertainment Weekly, Greg Yaitins, who directed the final episode, revealed on the West of Westeros podcast that production struck a snag during filming when Elliot contracted COVID. It meant that production needed to find a successor, and the answer came, predictably, from his twin brother. There, that big scene where Coralis, Steve Toussaint, came down and they're laying the marks on the table and the messenger comes in, says Yaitins on the program, it was a two-day shot and then one got COVID, he continues. Because Elliot had COVID, we replaced him with his sibling. It must have been a huge relief to have such a handy replacement to fix an unanticipated difficulty, and the director remarks, quote, that would have killed us. If Luke hadn't been able to come in for his brother, we were just about to conduct all Emma's coverage. Yai Ting's continued, and he is standing right next to them. It's also a credit to Luke's ability to jump into a different role and pull it off without a hitch. The first season of House of the Dragon is finally concluded, and when the show returns, we will undoubtedly see the pieces on the chessboard move as the Dance of the Dragons will be in full swing. Following that, Reddit picks the best House of the Dragon episode. The results of a poll that was recently held on Reddit to determine which episode of the first season of House of the Dragon was the best were, to say the least, unexpected. The conclusion of the series titled The Lord of the Tides was an overwhelming success. No additional episodes can catch up to episode 10, The Black Queen, which is currently far behind, or the result wasn't all that unexpected, except for the significant margin by which episode 8 beat every other episode, and possibly in Reddit not providing evidence to support the accusations of contrarianism hurled against it. Most reviewers believe that episode 8 was the greatest of the season. It would appear that there are two primary reasons for this. First, episode 8 played to the core strength of House of the Dragon as a family drama. And second, it was Patty Considine's finest hour as King Viserys, who is one foot in the grave by the time that that episode aired. Patty Considine's outstanding performance is the driving force behind the majority of this season's success. Although the majority of the actors in the series delivered at least good work, episode 8 is the series' last chapter and the high point of his career, and the episode's strong storytelling provided him with an opportunity to take center stage. Next up, more specifics on the Best House of the Dragon episode. The essence of Viserys' character is highlighted in episode 8 as the dying king pulls himself out of bed despite figuring and practically breaking apart, and desperately tries to reunite the two branches of his family at a point where no reconciliation is realistically possible. The original material allowed Viserys' character to be interpreted as that of a weak and lazy man whose acts were mostly motivated by a desire to avoid personal confrontations with his relatives and courtiers. The series has shades of that, quote, I am forever doomed to enrage one person in order to please another. Still, thanks to Considine and the script given to him, Viserys instead comes across as a noble and tragic man attempting to perform his kingly duties to the best of his ability, while unwittingly allowing events to slide inexorably towards strife and the civil war because his love for his relatives constantly blinds his judgment. In episode 8, his final, desperate attempt to stop the carnage leads to him directly witnessing the first act of bloodshed of the developing conflict on the last day of his life. This is the House of the Dragon at its most dramatic. Moving on, the Greek Greens or the Blacks? Eric has been assigned to safeguard Aegon as a devoted member of the Kingsguard who uses his position to order Eric away. That is, when the King's Hand, Otto Hightower, comes looking for Aegon, he vanishes. Eric and Eric are tasked with locating and transporting Aegon to Otto. Before word of Viserys' death spreads, they must do so in secrecy, so the brothers travel into the city to all of Aegon's favorite dodgy spots. They visit a location where destitute youngsters are forced to battle for pleasure. They come to a tiny 
boy who Eric believes is Aegon's bastard. Eric is aware that Aegon spends many nights watching these battles and attempts to persuade Eric of Aegon's character. Eric feels frustrated by the prince's actions. He does not want to be a part of a kingdom headed by someone like Aegon. Eric claims Eric has been tolerating the prince's tendencies for years and that they swore an oath. But Eric is still skeptical. The brothers track down Aegon with the aid of the White Worm, Kristen Cole, and Aemond follow them unnoticed, attempting to bring Aegon to Alicent. Eric is fighting Cole, but Eric refuses to assist. Eric doesn't mind if Aegon is taken to the Hand or the Queen because he doesn't want to be associated with either. Eric assists Rhaenys in escaping the treason at King's Landing, thereby joining Rhaenyra and the Blacks. Eric, on the other hand, appears to want to back Aegon. Following that, the differences from Fire and Blood. The Cargills fight on opposing sides of the conflict in George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood, but there is no dramatic determining moment. After Harwin's strong death, Eric becomes Rhaenyra's personal guard, albeit the two do not have the same relationship as Rhaenyra does with Harwin. When Viserys dies, Eric is in Dragonstone protecting Rhaenyra, while Eric is in King's Landing with the Greens. In this situation, they individually side with the persons they are with at the time of the division. It's easier to help the people around them than to let them jail them. The show appears to have made Eric Aegon's guard, which is a fascinating twist because Eric's support for Rhaenyra now leads him to leave the prince he vowed to defend. The program also adds the problem of Eric needing to depart King's Landing and find Rhaenyra. However, this simple adjustment gives the character volition and demonstrates many of the court's predicaments. Eric chooses his duty, but his brother does what he believes is right. This contrast underscores a recurring tension in Game of Thrones, which has now made its way into House of the Dragon. Eric and Eric debating which side to support sheds light on the issues. It also illustrates how those who are not blood relatives to either side feel about the impending violence. Finally, the fate of the Cargill twins. Fire and Blood also reveals what the future holds for the twins, as one might imagine in Westeros, it is bleak. Kristen Cole, now Lord Commander of Aegon's Kingsguard, directed Eric to enter Dragonstone as Eric. The aim of Eric is unclear, although Cole most likely wanted him to kill Rhaenyra or her children. Eric ran into Eric, the only person who could see through his disguise, which must have taken minimal work to put together. The brothers fought to the death in the corridors of Dragonstone Citadel. They fought for an hour in the songs before proclaiming their love for each other and dying in each other's arms. However, one of Fire and Blood sources tells a different story. Mushroom, the court gesture, always tells the most varied and colorful accounts of events. According to him, the brothers mortally wounded each other in seconds and each died while calling the other a traitor. If the House of the Dragon decides to tell Cargill's death story at all, they will choose which version to tell. Eric approaches Alicent about an issue with Aegon in Episode 8, The Lord of the Tides, and she cannot tell him apart from his brother. Though the incident appears insignificant, it serves no purpose other than to demonstrate that even those who spend a significant amount of time with both brothers cannot tell him apart. This truth lays the groundwork for the plan to send Eric to Dragonstone, disguised as his brother, ultimately leading to their deaths. What are your thoughts on our video? What about the swap? Did you catch it at the end? Please let us know in the comments section. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, please hit that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.